As a child, Karen Nakbil Tanyada saw love of country up close and personal. When we were growing up, he was the only politician in the family, but um, he was enough because he was really well known as a very principled person. Everybody uh, was inspired by him and in a way it's hard to do wrong. I mean you shouldn't do wrong when you have uh, such a leader in your family. You, know? you have to try at least to do something for the country. During the first quarter storm I was still in third year high school but we already had an awareness of uh, issues in society. In 1971, she joined a group of students on the session floor of Congress to bring up the issue of a missing 26 million pork barrel fund. That was my first arrest but we were released within a few hours. <laughs> Actually I realized now that there was a time almost every other day or every three days there would be a big rally. You know? so a lot of the times we would, it would be a declaration by the student council and then we would bring the buses uh, with the students. We would sit in our mini skirts <laughs> on, the, on Plaza Miranda. Sometime in 1980, friends were shocked to see Karen's photograph flashed on television and newspapers. Uh, that was already late 1980. Yeah, we had an arrest warrant in connection with this April 6th liberation movement. Because of that arrest warrant, I had to go into hiding for four and a half years. So it was a long time. There was a time I really thought this must be one of the bravest women I knew. She's fearless, but she's never, never called attention to herself. It was always about the cause. It was never about herself. In 1986, after Ferdinand Marcos was overthrown through people power and democratic space was restored, Karen continued to look for different ways to serve the people. After EDSA, that's when we decided also to formed the group called Coalition for Peace. At that time, there were also the peace talks that had been started between the government, NDF, the National Democratic Front. And we formed also the National Peace Conference, where we, we tried to bring in the agenda, mainly of the different sectors like indigenous people, fisher folk, farmers, workers, uh, as part of the peace agenda. Women are usually among those most affected by the the conflict. Magkasama kami sa Pilipina, uh, which is a feminist organization that was formed in 1980. We also work together on issues focusing on promoting women's rights and gender equality. She serves as a unifying force, which other women leaders don't have. She's acceptable to all, even conservative ones. Even the most radical ones, <laughs> tanggap siya ng lahat. In 2001, Karen became the executive director of the Gaston Z. Ortigas Peace Institute, which was established mainly to support citizens' participation in the peace process. From 2001, she has been the permanent base of GCO, making sure it did so much work that doesn't call very much public attention, but is needed. Uh, because peace work is also a lot of housekeeping. When we signed the comprehensive agreement on the, on, on the Bangsamoro, the CAB, and uh, one of the bodies that it gave birth to was the third party monitoring team or TPMT, uh, which would monitor the implementation of the CAB. For us in the government side, there, wa there was no question she was the best person to be the national uh, third party. So the TPMT is, is very important. Very few people understand the role of, of this group. It so much characterizes uh, the way uh, Karen has played her role. To always be present, to be watchful, to do what needs to be done, and to see it through to its, uh, through, to its ending. So while or all sorts of noise happens around, the Bangsamoro, in bringing about change and very specifically in bringing about peace. It's so important to have leaders who are willing to take risks, who are willing to lead noisily sometimes, bring out the truth as it needs to be told, 
uh, but also to do the quiet work, the housekeeping work, of, of keeping track of things, of being able to nudge people quietly. And I, I, th I think that that has been a major contribution of Karen. She has played that role steadfastly. Today, after more than 40 years, Karen is back on the streets, a constant presence in protest rallies, marching for the protection of women, social justice, and human rights. There's still a great challenge on peace, particularly because of the, the threats now to human rights, no? and um, what seems to be an acceptance of the, the easy role of the military in our uh, national life. No? So, hindi natin masasabi na may tunay na kapayapaan kung wala naman palang dignidad at karapatan yung maraming tao.